Yeah, hi. Um, we're in France, in Lille, if I pronounce it correctly. Yep. This is Clément. Hi. This is Fred. Hi. Um, so they are our French partners. Um, so we're just going through the very first time basic training. And so hopefully um, we can do some translation um, because my French is completely non-existent. Um, so we've got a basic setup and what we've done is we've got the three point, we've got the 5.2 kilowatt battery, 3.6 kilowatt inverter. So start from the very basics and what I was explaining is we've set the menu to French um, and the very, very first thing that we do that we check is we connect the battery and we check that we've got communication between the battery and here, the BMS. This is, so make sure the inverter is talking to the battery. So you want to explain in French. <laughs> donc le, ce qui est important, c'est de connecter donc du coup la batterie avec l'onduleur via ce câble RJ45. Donc il vient se connecter ici et qui va passer ici pour se connecter directement à l'onduleur. So it's important it's the correct way around. If you connect, if you click on the the cog icon here and you go onto lithium and some of it's in French, some of it's in English, but you'll see here we've got communication. This here, and we see it's communicating. If we don't see that we've got the communication, we know we've got a problem. Okay. Donc si, donc là, si vous cliquez sur les paramètres sur la batterie, là vous avez les informations de la batterie. Si les informations ne sont pas mises, c'est qu'il y a une mauvaise connexion entre la batterie et l'onduleur. So that single issue is one of the biggest problems that we get because if you haven't got communication between the inverter and the battery nothing will work properly so very simple connection the next thing is which is very important is we added we add a ct coil the ct coil is here and i've just connected it on this cable this is purely for demonstration purposes on the ct coil has an arrow and the arrow is facing towards the inverter and the CT coil is used as a blocker. It stops the export of power. This would normally be connected to the meter, but on this, for just purely for training, we've connected to this connector block. <laughs> CT coil. CT. 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 Yeah, current transformer. Okay. So, in gros, Cet, cet appareil là est là pour bloquer. It's to block the power. Yes, yeah. ah, it's to control the export power. C'est pour contrôler donc euh, le, le, je sais plus, la sortie, la sortie de, de la puissance. Donc c'est important de le fixer sur le câble. Donc là, on a on a fait un montage comme si on était branché au réseau. Donc c'est ici pour contrôler et qui est connecté directement ici à la part à l'onduleur. The, sorry, the third thing that we've done, which I personally not so familiar with, but we've set it up, um, is the data logger. This is the thing that will communicate with the internet. Now, what I'm showing here, we've set this up onto a bench, is anybody installing a system for the very first time, I strongly recommend you put the thing on the table and you set it up something similar to like this and get familiar with the product. Donc la chose euh, la plus facile, c'est dans un premier temps pour bien comprendre euh, et être plus familier avec les appareils, c'est de, de mettre ça sur une table et de faire les connexions euh, basiques sur la table pour pouvoir bien comprendre le système, pour être familier avec, pour pouvoir ensuite le réinstaller sur, euh, sur, sur son installation. So, only what we've done is here, we've connected, we've actually connected two groups, the socket block, which is output to this lamp, and we've connected the plug, which is the input. On the connector block, we've got three sets of connections. One is the grid, one is the load, one is a generator, which is actually an auxiliary. The grid connection is both in and out. The load is for UPS use, and the generator is not just a generator, it's an auxiliary, it can be used for lots of things. Donc, il y a trois euh, connexions. Il y a au réseau, la charge et le générateur. Euh, Celui-là, il y a une entrée une sortie. Only this one? Is ah, in and out. Is in and out. Entrée et sortie. Donc, il y a seulement le réseau qui est en entrée et en sortie. So, if you're wiring the inverter without a battery, you only connect this one. Si vous si vous n'avez pas d'installation avec une batterie, vous aurez uniquement euh, connecté directement au réseau. Okay. So, this inverter is our 3.6. 
with a seven kilowatt MPPT. That means we can put 7,000 watts of solar panel, enough solar to charge the battery and use the power on the same time. Donc là, avec cette installation là, avec le MPPT, vous allez pouvoir avoir 700, 7000, uh, 7, 7, yeah. 7, uh, 7000 uh, ampères pour le, les panneaux solaires. So that's the basic setup. We're not going to go through the whole training because this is just an introduction. So I can, can go through more, but you can see on the screen here. And in fact, the battery is at 50%. And what's actually happening now, if I go onto the battery setting here, and it can, it's charging the battery at 30 amp. That's 30 amp at 48 volts. And so if you divide it, by, if you divide it by five, we'll give you the input current. But it's 30 amp at 48 volts and discharging. So that's what's set there. 100 amp hour because it's a 100 amp hour battery. So if I escape here, and you see on the front here, you see the battery, the SOC, means state of charge, is 51%. And now, because the setting here is now charging the battery at 1.43 kilowatt, and it's taking 1.52 from the AC, and the, diff the tiny difference is on the load, which is, which is actually running this small lamp. So là, on peut voir qu'on est en charge à 51%. And donc là, on a les, in les informations uh, de la battery. Et là, I can see. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you see yeah. Donc là, la, la batterie et le réseau. Donc on a les informations du réseau et de la batterie pour voir la, 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 la charge. Hop, voilà. Donc là, on voit qu'on est à 51% de, de charge et on, tout en continuant à allumer, alimenter une lampe. So the, obviously we have a bar chart here and the bar chart here is this is actually the battery charge in and out of the battery during the daytime. So this bar chart is during the day, a cumulative day. This is the battery state of charge. This is your solar produced. If you're using a generator, this is the generator run hours, not power. And if you're going to sell export power, it will show here. And if you're going to import power, it will show here. And this is your accumulation for the day. Donc là, en information, donc vous avez donc ce qui rentre et, qui, et ce qui sort euh, des batteries, euh, la, la recharge. Ça, c'est si vous avez des panneaux solaires, donc ce qui va rentrer par les panneaux solaires. Ça, ce qui est pour le générateur. Et ça, ce que vous allez acheter, acheter ou vendre euh, ou consommer pardon, en, en électricité. So what Clement keeps catching, if you, catch the, if you touch the bar chart, you get into this, which is a, a flow chart. And this actually shows you what's going on. So here you've got the two MPPTs. Now we've got no MPPTs connected to it. That's a solar. Mm -hmm. And you'll see the solar comes in and you choose where you want the solar to go. And these are your three outputs. So from this is like a very nice flow chart that shows you what everything that's going on. Donc là c'est le schéma avec donc on peut voir les panneaux solaires, les MPPT, le l'onduleur, la batterie et euh, et le réseau rentrant. So when I was mentioning before on the setup here is what on our battery I mentioned it's very important to get communication. So using our, our lithium battery, which is the SunSync, is set on lithium and it's on canvas. So it's a very simple setting. Donc là les paramètres sont vraiment très simples. On choisit donc là c'est les informations de la batterie. Donc en lithium on est sans, sur du 100 ampères. Donc on rentre juste ça avec euh, CAN. Et donc du coup on a les, les bonnes spécifications du, du produit. So uh, let me escape it. One of the most important things, once you power the unit up and your battery is communication, so make sure you get a normal light. If you don't get a normal light, the inverter is not running. But if you get a normal light, you know the inverter is actually functioning correctly. And this is actually now in reverse mode. So the inverter is now acting as a battery charger. So it's got operating backwards. And hence you can see the figure here is a minus. And I'm doing what you were doing here. And you see it's a minus. Minus means it's charging the battery. If it's a, if it's a plus figure, no minus. It's discharging the battery. Okay. So, donc, euh, donc là, on a l'information. Uh, si le système est normal, votre uh, onduleur fonctionnera normalement. S'il n'est pas allumé, il ne fonctionnera pas. Après, une autre information aussi, c'est que là, on peut voir que le, le chiffre est en négatif parce qu'on est en train de charger la batterie. S'il était en positif, c'est qu'on consommerait ce qu'il y avait sur la batterie. So on the programming, if you touch this, this, this cog in the top and then you'll see the navigation page. And so these are very simple. And we can go through these in more detail, in, in actual detail training. But the very simple one, which is the basic. And here you can put in, um, obviously, the time and the date. And here, my fingers, you can actually put your company name. 
um, and it's a language selection and you can type in here company name and it will appear on the front screen so there's very there's very very nice setup facility on here um, going through the rest of the points is your battery um, your grid um, and I, I, we go through another training advanced features of using it multi inverter and paralleling um, auxiliary there's lots of different functions in auxiliary and fault code which is a diagnostic tool donc là on a les paramètres donc on est sur des icônes très très simples où vous allez pouvoir paramétrer euh, l'heure euh, après vous allez pouvoir paramétrer euh, si vous voulez Hop. moi aussi j'ai <rire> des gros yeah. là vous allez pouvoir mettre le nom de l'entreprise euh, les différentes langues proposées donc anglais, espagnol, français, portugais Hop. après donc vous avez les informations sur la batterie qu'on a vu tout à l'heure sur le réseau sur le, système, le mode système après un paramètre avancé si vous voulez rajouter euh, les, les accessoires euh, charge auxiliaire et après les codes erreur donc si vous avez des codes erreur vous avez juste à cliquer vous aurez euh, le co la correspondance par rapport au code erreur so on the screen the, the most difficult part to know is here which is the system mode and this is a timer it's a bit like a, a, an air conditioner or a central heat in the UK we use central heating I think it's probably the same in France heating system timer um, basically this will say when the inverter is to charge when it's a discharge but we will do a separate video and explain this because this is where people tend to get confused. Um, okay, I won't go through that. <laughs> I, all I can say is, I'm, hopefully, this is, this is the start of a long relationship. We're working with Clemence and Fred. Um, my French is almost non-existent, so uh, I'm gonna have to hand a lot of this over to Clemence. <laughs> Moi, je serai là pour euh, donc présenter les produits en français euh, en partenariat avec, euh, avec Philippe et Case pour promouvoir euh, les produits Sunsync euh, sur le marché franchi, français pardon, et sur euh, les pays euh, francophones. Ok, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <rire>